Good afternoon. I'm looking for the doctor. The doctor. The doctor. The doctor. The old doctor. You're trying to be funny. Well, you've certainly come to the right place. Definitely in the right spot. What? Paul to open. Paul to open. Yes, and what do you do? The operation must have been meticulously planned. Well, they're any sort of computers with a few extra knobs on. I'm going to have to play along with them again. Sorry, what's going on? I don't understand. Today, we're counting down the 100 biggest hits of Doc Tor Who. Hello, hello, and welcome to a very special episode of Pull to Open, the Doctor Who podcast that takes you in random order through Doctor Who stories. It's been quite a quest, and my name is Chris Taylor. And I'm Pete Paschal, and yeah, normally we'd be here talking about a specific story. That's what we love to do. That's what we love to bring you guys every week. But this time, we are doing a special episode with uh, some new information about how we regard the stories that we talk about. So as everyone who listens to Pull to Open knows, we rank every episode. Well, we were sorry. We rate every episode at Correct. the end of every commentary. And our special rating system, it's a little unorthodox. It's not like we give it stars. We have ratings that certainly would rank stories higher than others but some of them might be a little unclear yeah uh, so, and it's a yeah. rating system we should say that that has evolved faster than the creatures of alzurius uh we started out as just marsh creatures with our original two ratings the, the dalek for a good episode the ogron for a bad we've we've slowly evolved that we had a special episode where we retcon some of our ratings uh, no doubt we'll be doing that again before we're done. Um, but no yeah, we're, we're 100 stories in, so it's time to, to take those 100 stories uh, and while preserving the ratings, uh, also put them in some sort of order. So yeah. uh, do, you, do you want to remind folks what, what our ratings are? And then I'll talk a little bit about the, the methodology of how, I, how, I ranked the, how we rank the stories within the ratings. I would be happy to. So the pull to open rating system has sometimes been reported, <laughs> maybe in our last podcast, as having seven ratings. No, that's actually uh, fake news. It's six. We have six <laughs> ratings. So those ratings are, first, the Dalek, which is what we give to a good episode of Doctor Who. Then, as you said, there's the Ogron, which we give to a not-so-good episode of Doctor Who. You might even say a bad episode of Doctor Who. Um then there is the Professor Hater, which was the first new rating we introduced to the whole system, which is we wanted to give it to stories that are not great, but they're emblematic of something that, is, you know, the show's ambition, they're trying something that doesn't work out, or uh, we learned something from the exercise of whatever they were trying to do, even though it wasn't particularly great. So that's oh, the Professor okay. Hater. Afraid I'm going to have to arrest you under the False Memories Act of 1975 there, because our very first new rating was the Viscount Banger. Oh, that's, that's right. Left. That emerged first. Yes. That one That one was, yeah. Okay, the Banger just made sense, because we had visited State of Decay, and yeah. we, of course, talked a lot about Lala Ward. It came up her parentage uh, was something we ended up talking about, and her dad, that's of right. course, is... Viscount of Banger, or <laughs> I'm not sure how that works. I don't know. So he's the yes. Viscount Banger. That's his title, I guess. Well, and yeah, so amazingly, there has he hasn't started a podcast of his own yet. So we're we're taking the podcasting mantle of of the Viscounts of Banger. That's that's what we are here. We look for the best of the best. And then there were other new ratings that were introduced. Uh, yep. The uh, the the fixed point in time came along when when I couldn't rate. Uh, Destiny of the Daleks. You couldn't uh, turn on it. Yep. Couldn't turn on it. It's it was just so nostalgic, such a part of my childhood. And uh, what a what a surprise we had last week for the for our hundredth story, Seeds of Death, which was your first fixed point in time, Pete. It was my first and also the podcast's fourth, I believe. I think we said at the time yeah. third, but I had forgotten that actually Dave Kitchen also used, one of our guests, he used the rating for The Doctor's Wife. So it's the fourth time in Pull to Open history we've used the fixed point in time. Um, and then, most recently, we have introduced the Lady Cassandra, which is a rating for Doctor Who as wallpaper. It is paper-thin plot, but it may look good 
So it's something you might just want to have in the background with the volume off uh, yeah. at your next party. It's pretty. It's moisturized. It's the uh, it's the Lady Cassandra. Thank you to the Bolt Open listeners for uh, proving that rating, which is what we'll do if, should we ever evolve any new tendrils uh, that create new ratings in the future, we'll definitely put it to you guys. Um, but this this uh, this ranking of our ratings is let, let me tell you how we did this. So we have our codex, which is our list of uh, all the stories that we've been to, and we have recorded within that codex our ratings. So what I did was I separated them into bangers, Daleks, haters, and everything else. Uh, and within those, uh, there, there, I, I, rate, I figured out that each one is a certain percentage. So, for example, if only one of us rated something a Viscount Banger and the other one rated it Dalek, then it would be a 50% Banger. So I ordered them by percentage, and obviously we have a lot the, the same percentage. So there are a lot of 100% Bangers where we all agreed. Hmm. Uh, we, uh, you know, we agreed, our guests agreed. And uh, and those I sent a survey to Pete over the of the last week, and uh, <laughs> we we both voted. There's wonderful sort of rank choice voting systems that you can use on the internet now. So we voted within each one. So we have actually figured out uh, our our bangerest of the bangers, our, <laughs> our top hits. We've ranked the bangers. We've ranked the bangers now of course, among everything else too. Because sometimes I, you get I the double ogrons, right? <laughs> sometimes you get the double ogrons, yeah. And, and we've, we've ranked those as well within each one. So that was a very easy way to uh, to divide it up, Pete. I, I'd say we, we spent no more than a few minutes voting on all of these. Like it, <laughs> it really made it super easy, except for one, <laughs> one story on which we were tied. And now to preserve uh, uh, our approved levels of... Uh, mystery and suspense i'm not going to reveal which one those was but we, we that was but we did yeah. do a, a pull to open poll recently so it's not going to be that much of a surprise uh but you that's where you our audience came in you you voted between two stories that we could not decide between under this system and yeah so we yeah. now have a list of 100 and and it's there are some surprises in there pete do you, do you think that this is sort of kind of an accurate reflection of um of how we've felt about each story and if we were a group mind, us and our guests? You know, I, I my glance is yes, but you know what? I think we're going to need to go through it yeah. for me to really feel the confidence that th we have the accurate ranking for all this, that everything is sort of shaking out where it should be. So all right. in, in the spirit of uh, perhaps certain 80s DJs, which maybe you could get into <laughs> at some point, I think it's time to count down our own Hot 100. That's right. It's time to get into it. And uh, yeah, if you, like me, were a Brit growing up in the 80s and you watch a show called Top of the Pops, this segment might sound a little familiar to you. And it certainly brought back some old memories for me. But we're going to get into it with the Hot 100 countdown starting now. <laughs> And at number 100, dropping like a bomb in the stomach of a pating, it's the Saranga Conundrum. Coming in at 99, boring us like they bored a hole in the TARDIS, it's the Sensorites. And at 98, doing the opposite of George Stevenson's rocket, it's the Mark of the Rani. And at 97, getting all tangled up in its vines, it's in the forest of the night. At 95, 96 rather, Harry Sullivan is an imbecile. He can't even remember the right numbers. That's because he's been watching Revenge of the Cybermen. And dropping like a plague in all their houses, it's the Big Bang that wasn't at 95, Terminus. And at number 94, Magpie Electricals can't repair this. It's the Idiot's Lantern. Here at 93, it's guaranteed to make a vegetarian reach for their cleaver. It's the two doctors. At number 92, the monks have always been number one in our hearts, but not here at the pyramid of the end of the world and the lie of the land. 
And here at 91, oh, there is big confusion in ancient China. It's Legend of the Sea Devils. And down at number 90, watch out for the wriggly things in the weeds. It's Fury from the Deep. And coming in like a Mavellan wig at name <laughs> number 89, we have Davros, Disco, and Douglas Adams. Don't panic or do panic. <laughs> it's Destiny of the Daleks. <laughs> do panic also about number 88, which features the original Professor Hater and still the worst, it's Time Flight. And here at 87, it's DOA Delivery from the heavy-handed message company, Orphan 55. At number 86, a vast ye scurvy dogs, and look away from the shipwreck, it's the smugglers. But don't forget your badge for mathematical excellence at number 85, but it's the Marsh of Time. But don't get too bogged down in it, it's only full circle. And escaping e-space at number 84, you're Amsterdam if you do watch Ark of Infinity. Dateline Solo at number 83. We're live from the Rainbow Cave at the Mutants. <laughs> at number 82, it's the Doctor. He's got a gang, yes. And the gang have produced some dinosaurs on a spaceship. Order in the court at number 81. We pronounce this story guilty of unauthorized ambition. It's Trial of a Time Lord, The Mysterious Planet. And at number 80, howdy partners. It's a surprisingly high showing for Hartnell's The Gunfighters. Here at 79, it's the reveal that changed everything. Unless, of course, it didn't. Uh, it's <laughs> Ascension of the Cybermen and The Timeless Children. At number 78, don't look in the cat's eyes. It's a tiny TARDIS team on the planet of giants. And watch out for number 77, or it's going to leave egg on everyone's face. It's Kill the Moon. And rounding out this first segment at number 76, it's the master getting mental and the jailhouse is a rockin'. It's the mind of evil. All right. And scene. <laughs> and scene. Wow. So let's uh, let's talk about this first segment. Uh, any any surprises <laughs> for you, Pete? The Can first segment of the key to pull to open time. <laughs> That's right. We've acquired the first segment, and it's a lot of stories that you know. They, I don't think they were they were all that bad. It's kind of nice to see that our worst twenty five. Like there are some of these I'd watch again. And I've seen some of the fans respond to uh, some of our commentaries and, you know, defend things like Range of the Cybermen and, and a few mm -hmm. of the others, which I totally get. Uh, every story has its fans. Generally, I think this the order here is good. I mean, what, leading off with the Saranga Conundrum, which I've on mm -hmm. record as saying probably the worst Doctor Who story I've seen. I think that, that definitely feels right. Uh, also, the sense rights, which I'd like infamously sort of <laughs> fell asleep at every single time I tried to watch it until I watched it for the podcast. Um, so all of that's good. One thing I would say is that, uh, the gunfighters kind of yeah. is a surprisingly high on sort of the bottom 25 here. Cause it's a, yeah. and they're at number 80. Um, when, you know, I, I thought it might've, uh, ended up a little lower. I, I would agree with that. And I, and I gotta say, I wouldn't actually mind popping the gunfighters on again. Maybe it deserves to be a little bit lower. Uh, there are probably some of these that I'd watch again before I watch the gunfighters. Uh, but if you were to choose one. I'll, I'll I'll give you my pick. I, if if I were to choose one of these to bump up the ratings a little, uh, mm -hmm. it, to bump up the numbers, and you know if we, if we could if we could do what Peter Capaldi does, or rather David Tennant does with Peter Capaldi in the uh, the fires of Pompeii, uh, and save just one of these, uh, I for me, weirdly enough, it would be dinosaurs on a spaceship. Huh. I'm kind Interesting. Of What's one you would put lower than it is, though? One that I would put lower, I think probably the next one, Trial of a Time Lord, Mysterious Planet. I, uh, yeah, I had such a such a bad time with that, and it sort of kind of you know reminds me of like bad childhood times of like trying to support Doctor Who, but really not feeling like I was into it. So, yeah, I think just just uh, yeah, off the top of my head, that's that's one I'd have to sink. How about you? I would definitely sink. 
Legend of the Sea Devils. Uh, pun <laughs> intended. I mean, I know it's really low already. It's 91, but I think looking at stuff ranked below it, I'm a little like, okay, come on. Revenge of the, I would much rather watch Revenge of the Cybermen again than Legend of the Sea Devils. Uh. Um, and conversely, I would say the one I would elevate is probably, honestly, the, the Monk two-parter, which I know yeah. we were highly critical of, but, you know, it has those good Missy scenes and it, it has some, you know, we actually praised highly the cold open we did. of Li- the lie of the land. Um, there's enough redeeming stuff there that I think it probably deserves to be a little higher than it is. Yeah, I think the, the cold open episode that we just did, uh, go back and listen to that if you haven't. I think that may be uh, influencing some of our thoughts about this. It's it's interesting with both both shows new who episodes to elevate here uh and well, even though you you chose to sink a new who episode as well you know i feel like uh, legend of the sea devils is the the exception that proves the rule uh hmm. yeah new new who in general it's on the rise mm-hmm. and, um just yeah. like this here podcast is on the rise guy we have done a lot of these podcasts as you can tell we've ranked uh, and given commentaries on you know, 100 stories, plus done a whole bunch of side trips. Um, but astute listeners out there, you've probably been following us for a while. And you probably noted that at some point early on in Pull to Open's run, the quality of the podcast just got a lot better. Well, the reason for that is a service called Zencaster. Like when we first started out podcasting, we were really <laughs> a lot like the doctor. We weren't quite sure what we were doing with the equipment we had. Uh, but ever since we switched to Zencaster, it's really been night and day. All you do is create your recording room in the cloud, send the link to your guests, and Zencaster handles the rest. It records studio quality sound and video up to 4K. Plus, it has all the tools you need to host, create, and distribute your podcast all in one place. Whether you have your own podcast, and I know some of you out there do, or you're thinking about starting one, we would strongly encourage you to check out Zencaster. So set your browser coordinates for Zencaster.com slash pricing and use our code IPUSH. That's I-P-U-S-H. And you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. We want you to have the same easy experiences that we do for all our podcasting and content needs. It is time to share your story. Remember, the site is Zencaster.com slash pricing and the code is IPUSH. All right. Thanks, Pete. And uh, it's time time to get back to our list. Uh, All right. Second segment of our countdown. Folks, uh, we're just getting going. Yeah, that's right. The anticipation is rising. And I will say in this next segment is the the result of the, the one uh, poll where we, we had to use the audience to decide between us. We could not decide between two stories. Uh, I will tell you after this segment which which one that they they were which ones those were we'll safely say that it was not uh two of the most uh important stories in doctor who history but thank you anyway for deciding between them there was a landslide vote in the favor of one uh but let's get into it let's get into it counting down all right hot 100 part two 75 to 51 here we go. At 75, coming in like a booster shot to your brain, it's the story <laughs> that gave Going Viral a bad name. It's the Invisible Enemy. At number 74, we're having a whale of a time with Matt Smith, unless we're crying in the beast below. And kneel before number 73 and give praise to Ty, and don't forget to pass the cactus, it's Medlos! And at number 72, Ice Warriors on the moon with balloons. That's right. It's the Seas of Death. On guard, number 71. Don't come at me with that ice cream spoon because it's Robot of Sherwood. Sticking with the historicals at number 70, a funny thing happened on the way to Magna Carta in the King's Demons. Don't fall asleep yet, because we're at number 69 with the best Doctor Who story ever to feature eye booger monsters. It's Sleep No More. And at number 68, he's a, he's a hot hit of the years, the year's hottest villain, pulling the strings, playing games. It's the Celestial Toymaker. Smash the like button for number seven, 67, but don't smash the Cybermen standing beside the tomb 
<laughs> and knock his head off with your cyber fist because we're here at Attack of the Cybermen. <laughs> and, and at number 66, it is, as far as the randomizer is concerned, the only Sylvester McCoy story in existence. It's Battlefield. And I'm trying to focus on number 65, but the only number I see is two, because there's two Nissas <laughs> and one buffet and a TARDIS taxi service as well in Black Orchid? Oh my goodness. <laughs> and at, at number 64, my goodness, where are the high brains? They're here. It's Bob Holmes' first hit, The Crotons. Coming in with a, a hot connection at number 63, Leela and Andred. We didn't even know you were dating here in the invasion of time. <laughs> and at number 62, here they come. It's the Tractators, and oops, there goes the TARDIS. It's Frontiers. All right, let's pick it, click it, and number 61 it. It's time for a special <laughs> delivery at Kerblam. And at number 60, it's more interlopers in an astronaut suit. They come in peace. Or do they? It's the ambassadors of death. At number 59, it's time to say goodbye to Turlo and Chameleon. And oh yeah, why don't we just kill the master too? Let's do that. It's our very first random story ever. Planet of Fire. At number 58, Frankenstein's monstering its way up the charts. It's The Haunting of Villa Diodati. It's number 57 on our list, but number one in the Himalayas, it's Doctor Who's first historical, Marco Polo. At number 56, coming in hot with Pigbin Josh and the killer golden hippies in the claws of Axos. Number 55, oh, it's a jungle in here, but really that's about all there is in here. In Planet of Evil. And at number 54, they're plastic, they're fantastic. They've teamed up with the master and they got a daffodil for you. It's Terror of the Autons. And at number 53, you check in and you should definitely check it out. It is the God Complex. At number 52, we're going back to eSpace for the three who rule in State of Decay. Coming in at 51, we have Draconians, Ogrons, and Daleks. Oh my! It's Frontier in Space! All right, there we have it. That's our second segment, everyone. And, uh, yes. Oh, gosh. Interesting, <laughs> yes. interesting orders here. Gotta say, I feel bad for Marco Polo. Uh, this is kind of a result of me giving it a fixed point in time. I'm sorry. Uh, I know that was uh, possibly in our first hundred stories. Maybe that the rating of mine that uh, that irked you the most, Pete. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it really feels like uh, Marco Polo belongs above the claws of Axos. Uh, yeah, and a bunch of these things, I would say. <laughs> yeah, and, well, and Terror of the Oddens. Yeah. Yeah. Really, There's a lot, okay. lot to like there. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. I think that I feel more comfortable with the overall ranking of this group. Yeah. better though i i think this all sort of feels right like invasion of time and black orchid and um robot of sherwood i mean like again they like they're like oh yeah those are those are episodes of doctor who they had fun stuff but they're also like not things you come back to or think of all that often uh in terms of the uh the canon so i think i think this is this is sort of the right group of stuff yeah, it's interesting to compare the the new who and the old in this, and there's there's a lot of going back and forth in these numbers, and you know it, it forces you to think: are we, are we rating based on sort of you know the, the overall quality of the show enough or too much? Right, like you mm. know, new who is always going to look better and and have higher production values, and that can sometimes sometimes sort of sway your opinion when you when you instantly think back to it, right? When you sort of uh, when you see a title like Frontiers or the God Complex, like instantly images jump into your mind and some of them are better looking images than others and, you know, remind you of, of better TV than the others. Uh, do, do you think we uh, we unfairly give weight to, to New Who because of that? You know, it's a good question. I think I think we're pretty good at correcting for that most mm -hmm. of the time because, you know, we don't typically – think about you know the ranking stuff or where it fits in things when we give our commentaries we're just fully immersed in whatever story that we've undertaken 
And I think, you know, as, as Doctor Who fans and as sort of lifelong Doctor Who fans that grew up in the classic series, we know the feelings that the ideas invoke. Like we we already have sort of a correcting mechanism, I think, when we look at things like the classic series and like, oh, right, yes, like they this could have looked like X or Y in the new series, but uh, I can sort of fill that in in my head, in my imagination, because I really love the idea of mm-hmm. what they're doing here. Like, for example, and it's not, um, we've already mentioned it, but the, um, or no, I think it's somewhere on the list, but the pirate planet is a mm-hmm. good one to think about where that the idea of a hollow planet that sort of mines other planets is something that you could just realize in such an epic way it, with today's special effects. But that idea of yeah. that is just so well uh, executed and talked about in the drama around it. Um yeah explored that it just it just really really works so i, th- I think we're pretty good yeah. at correcting for that yeah we're kind of new I, I think you're right we're, we're kind of ranking and pirate planet's an excellent example we're kind of ranking that the, the vision that it gives us in our head uh as well as the actual special effects on screen and it, i'm glad you picked the pirate planet because just to tease it coming up that may be the highest ranking uh classic who that's that's the biggest surprise uh where how high it's reached on our charts according to this rating system so Stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. And guys, this entire list you will be able to check out on our website after this goes up. So if you go to pulltoopen.net, the fresh website where we both have our podcast as well as all all the notes on the stories and shows that we do, um, check it out because you can go there and you can subscribe to pull to open now, not just as a podcast, but as a newsletter so that it'll come to you just right in your inbox, both the audio file as well as emails with all the notes. So check it out, pull to open.net. Please subscribe there. And uh, if you're checking us out there, why not also check us out on Patreon and uh, potentially become a patron of pull to open. So we're at p- patreon.com slash pull to open. Um, check that out. And uh, maybe consider supporting the uh, the podcast. Yeah, officers and cars uh, answer all urgent calls, and and so can you if you're one of our supporters on Patreon. Uh, you can also support us by uh, helping out with our social media. We're kind of uh, on the on the hunt for a um, for some more help on that front. So slide into our DMs if you're interested in that. Yeah, and remember and to you're... review the show. You do that. <laughs> <laughs> review the show on whatever podcast app you're in it, it really does help with visibility with for new listeners um and if you're on spotify there's even more ways to interact with the show go ahead and rate the show on that app with a star rating or some such uh That's don't forget right. to follow us on youtube so we're at youtube.com slash pull to open and on all the social networks tiktok and blue sky we're pull to open twitter instagram facebook and threads we're pull to open 63 Indeed. All right. Well, that's that's it for housekeeping, and uh, it's it's the moment you've been waiting for. It has been prepared for, because we have prepared a couple of segments here, where we're counting down the top fifty, the top fifty. Oh yeah, a pull to open history, and uh, it's it's getting it's getting exciting in here. So let's count it down, starting with here we go. Number 50, the hot hit from a ruined monastery with a gramophone. That's right. It's the Time Meddler. And at number 49, we're having a lice time in a creepy old house. Hey, hey, what's that at the door? It's Knock Knock. (laughs) Knock Knock, who's that? Number 48, it's Bill Potts. Bill Potts with a missing legion in the Eaters of Light. And wipe that grin off your face. It's number 47, and Bill Potts is also here with some emoji robots. So go ahead and smile, would you? (laughs) That's right. Once you've smiled, go to number 46. Live from the wreck of a British spaceship, it's Doctor Who's first new companion, Vicky, in the rescue. Dropping like a diabolical plan at number 45. We were having some James Bond style fun in the sun. And oh, by the way, Gallifrey's gone. It's <laughs> Spyfall. And at number 44, stumbling out of its TARDIS and falling into the color era face first, 
It's Pertwee and the Autons with Spearhead from Space. Coming in at number 43, we're stumbling again, but this time through a wormhole onto your screens at Christmas. It's, of course, the Doctor, the Widow, and the Wardrobe. And at number 42, get in your dunking chair with Alan Cumming and keep your evil eye on the Witchfinders. Grab your fishing rod for number 41, but don't forget your sword when you meet the androids of Tara. And at number 40, Peter Capaldi learns that if you keep doing that, you'll go blind in oxygen. And here we are, number 39, dropping out of a cupboard like a giant green insect. It's the Ark in Space. And some more giant green insects at number 38, dropping all over Wales. It's the Green Death. And check out number 37. There's some familiar looking security drones. What are they doing in Downing Street? Is this Revolution of the Daleks? I think it is, and number 36, fresh from the confession dial, it's the hottest hit on New Who Gallifrey, Hell Bent. Dropping like an ancient skull, it's calling to your mind from the distant past. It's, of course, the image of the Fendal. And at number 34, it is our highest rated story starring a cybermat named Bitey. That's right closing time coming in at number 33 the cybermen bow in and hartnell's wearing a bit thin in the 10th planet and at number 32 fast forward to new who for charles dickens and the body snatchers in the unquiet dead dropping like a giant snowflake shaped spaceship at 31 Donna Noble and the wedding that wasn't in our highest rated Christmas story, The Runaway Bride. And at number 30, who's that wrapped up in bandages? Is Tom Baker your mummy? He is in Pyramids of Mars. And at number 29, it's a timey wimey hit for two brigadiers and a black guardian in Modern Undead. And sticking with a school theme, at number 28, oh mate, the missus and the ex, welcome the doctor's worst nightmare, it's school reunion. And get ready for conversion at number 27, it's our top ranked Cyberman story so far, Dark Water and Death in Heaven. That's right, and uh, just overtaking Missy here at number 26, speeding across a diamond planet, and once this is talking faster than me, it's Midnight! And there it is. The the, the next 25. That's right. All right. So some interesting choices here. I think that if you're a classic Who fan, you might be shaking your fist at your phone screen right now about, uh, I guess, uh, Pyramids of Mars, maybe. How, How low we've rated that, that it's only number 30. I think it... For a lot of people, it might be uh, a lot higher than that. What do, you, what do you think about that, Raging Pete? Well, I'm, I, I'm very comfortable with that one and another one of the classics here that some people might like. Certainly RTD and Moffat both like the arc in space. Yeah. So I think part of the exercise of doing Pull to Open is finding both hidden gems and overrated episodes. And I think both of those, we sort of came in thinking, okay, this is, you know, I can see why people like it, but that it's probably overrated. There are some nonsensical bits in both and uh, just various things that don't really work and some stuff that's set up that isn't ever really paid off. So yeah, I, I, I'm pretty comfortable with those. Um, I'm kind of surprised Revolution of the Daleks is so high. I think... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's fair. I, I don't know. I uh, uh, That one, I think I said it during the podcast, I'll say it again. I think that it was such a relief to have something after a very uneven season for for Whitaker and the whole timeless child thing it was kind of nice to like take a break to have captain jack back like i think that that may have kind of influenced how we felt about that one uh but but let's uh mm-hmm. you know may, maybe maybe the most controversial thing here according to the 
the rankings that are coming out from Doctor Who magazine, uh, the Time Meddler down at number fifty there, right? Uh, whereas that is the the top Hartnell in in the latest Doctor Who magazine. Not the top; it's near the top. Near the near the top. Um, so more, it, number two, I think. I think it's number right? two. Yeah. So again, I what I was just saying about overrated, I think, might apply to the Time Meddler, which again, there's some great ideas and. If you are watching, I think we said this at the time, if you're watching the series from the beginning through, I think it's the kind of thing that will kind of blow you away. It's like, oh, wow, you know, now we're finally getting some background on Mm -hmm. the doctor and where he's from, which I think was really compelling and could be compelling even on rewatch. But I think out of that context, you can kind of see like, oh, yeah, you know, there's the, the silly back and forth between the monastery and the village um there's just sort of goofy performances from the guest yeah, cast there's the vikings the, yeah and even even the stuff that the monks trying to do you're just again it's kind of done for fun but like what what are you doing man like well, why <laughs> why are you a time at like you're just kind of here as this sort of um uh, contrived antagonist because we need one and yeah. you know again fun stuff good stuff it's not a bad episode but it's probably an overrated one it's it's great performance uh, from Peter Butterworth as the time meddler, but yeah, it's it, it may be like the celestial toy maker. It's kind of better a better villain in head canon than in reality, and and certainly in in uh, Big Finish, <laughs> better than uh, in the show, right? Uh, yeah, you know, in this case with a lot of these. So yeah, you're right. It's you viewing these out of out of order. Like uh, maybe the problem with Revolution of the Darks is that we can't divorce it from the, the season that we watched, right? At uh, almost uh, contemporaneous with with the first season of Pull to Open, uh, right? So if you know, perhaps if it was if it was completely out of order, we might give it a lower ranking, or maybe not. I think it's kind of fun. Yeah, uh, no, it works. Here's here's what yeah. I, this list is essentially the good but not great episodes. Yeah, and again, I think that for to some classic fans, saying that about Pyramids of Mars or Ark in Space mm. might be sacrilege. Um, but I think you know we made a good case in each one of those on why. Yeah. Um, they're not super great. And Midnight is actually, I think, a perfect episode to lead this list. Yeah. Because uh, it okay. is either the the least good great episode or <laughs> the most great good episode, if you know what I mean. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's, it's dead on. Yeah. And Midnight might be the one that, that you know, if, if we'd done this ranking before we started pull to open before we started rent this random adventure i don't think we'd put midnight anywhere near the top 50 to be honest i think or at least not me oh at the beginning yeah without having watched it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, i think i think you're right i would say oh yeah midnight i guess that was that one where we were on a bus and it was a little bit creepy with with david Tennant. but then upon watching like oh wow you know this is this actually has some really cool layers to it and super and and i think that yeah, and I think this is this is one where our, our audience kind of helped us uh, tune in to the the delights of Midnight Night. We we kind of Agreed. really liked it on on a rewatch, but my goodness, you all you all loved it. Yeah, I remember all the comments on TikTok. Yeah. It was just like there was so much nostalgia for it, and I think for certainly a younger generation of fans, I think that was just one of the more compelling episodes because I think it opened up to a large extent like what Doctor Who could be, mm-hmm. you know, for as a show, and it did. It, it, just showing that it, one week it can be fun and bouncy and other ones it can be sort of creepy or, or thrilling. I mean, you know, Blink was also around the same mm-hmm. era and, you know, just, just showing all these facets of the show that you could sort of do a similar feeling to Blink, but not do the same thing again. Like it just, mm-hmm. just this multidimensional uh, emotional beats of the show it can sort of evoke, I think really captured a whole generation of uh, fans. Indeed. Well, speaking of uh, the fans and how the fans have helped us, uh, we uh, we want to talk about the poll that where you helped us decide between. And I can now reveal, in case you weren't on Twitter in the in the past uh, in the past week, reveal what we did. A poll to open sixty three on Twitter. We ran a poll between Megalos and the Seeds of Death because those were the two. Sorry, Megalos and the Seeds of Death. <laughs> Megalos, uh, because those are the two stories that that this system of you know, dividing it into uh, our six ratings and then having a survey of us in, in between it yielded only one 
one tie. So you broke that tie, and my goodness, did you ever break that tie in uh, in the the weirdest Doctor Who poll that you could ever imagine? Uh, is probably you know Megalos versus the Seeds of Death. What else could possibly connect them except the random adventure of Paul to open? Uh, but here are, here are the results, and it is a landslide victory. Uh, Megalos got fourteen point three percent of the vote, but with a stunning eighty five point seven percent of the vote, you decided the Seeds of Death were the best was the best uh, of these two ratings. So thank you for assisting. The hot 100 here and uh we'll have some more polls in the future and as this list continues to grow and evolve as we add more rankings we continue our random journey uh there'll be plenty more opportunities for you to interact for you to decide the final the final countdown at the, the very end of time when we will have <laughs> at least a hot 300 pete uh many years in the dim and distant future oh yes not the end of time. And the end of time will be on that list. We haven't done it yet. It will be. But... <laughs> we will go beyond the end of time, unless the end of time is literally the last story that Randomizer chooses. That would be amazing. Oh, wow. Okay. Entirely possible. It's like a one in 200 chance. <laughs> so shall we? Shall we get to the, the, the part of the list everyone has been waiting for? That's right. Yes, you've you've been uh, you've been waiting like a Doctor Who fan in the dark ages. But it's time. It's time to count down the top 25 from 25 all the way to number 1 although we might just pause on the edge of number 1. Uh I think you'll be able to guess what it is. <laughs> uh we uh yeah, we we got some <laughs> we got some conventional stuff in this list but we've also got some surprises. So let's get to it. In the final segment of the Hot 100 Countdown. All right, folks, grab your recorders and your stovepipe hats, because look out, there are some cardboard monsters to be dealt with here in Patrick Pout Prouton's shocking debut, The Power of the Daleks. And at number 24, it's one serious countdown going on on Riggsy. Oh, but what's this now? It's going on on Clara. Man, me, what have you done? It's Face the Raven. Coming in at number 23, it's Gallifrey's first reboot. The fourth Doctor's called back home to deal with the deadly assassin. And at number 22, playing the liar so quietly you might not be able to appreciate it unless you have a fine-tuned ear for music while Rome burns. It's the Romans! And at 21, it's time for some truth or consequences or just some epic Peter Capaldi speechifying. It's the Zygon invasion slash inversion. And at number 20, taking you where you need to go, always, it's the very sexy doctor's wife. At number 19, is there a doctor in the horse? You bet there is. It's the Myth Makers. And sticking with historicals, number 18, it's a historical hit from 1955, but you might know it better as Doctor Who's best after-school special, It's Rosa. At 17, it's a small world, kids, but you know, the children love the monsters. Hey, there's nothing political here in Carnival of Monsters. And at number 16, coming in hot with our top-rated Hartnell, get your human sacrifices ready for the Aztecs. Coming in at number 15, it's everyone's favorite hollow planet, Xanak. But watch out for those Mentiads on the pirate planet. And at number 14, it's a hot hit for the Time Lord Victorious that's anything but all wet. It's the waters of Mars. And it's the story that got us wondering just how many doctors there are here at number 13. Surely one of them is a fugitive of the Jadu. And at number 12, going live from the sewers of London, it's Tom Baker and the Giant Rats. And just a little bit of racism in the talons of Wang Chiang. Coming in hot at number 11, this one's way bigger on the inside. Apparently, they're in the walls in Flatline. And at number 10, Donna Noble has left the library. Donna Noble has been saved. And so have we. It's Silence of the Library slash Forest of the Dead. 
Be Still My Heart at number nine. The doctor gets romantic with it in this story with French girls, horses, and clockwork robots. It's the girl in the fireplace. And at number eight, following up with the ultimate fighting championship for the galaxy. That's right. It's time to play all ten episodes of the War Games. And at number seven, it's the end for Tom Baker's Doctor. But the moment has been prepared for. Logically, it must be Logopolis. That's right. And at number six, some like it pretty hot. If you drill down, let's face it, parallel worlds are cool. So are eye patches. It's Inferno. Coming in at number five, we go deep into the casing of Doctor Who's number one monster. It's the hugely dramatic... Dalek. And at number four, sticking with Daleks, have I a right to talk about this classic? Yes, I do. I'm sticking the two wires together and telling you that it's Genesis of the Daleks. Dropping like a laser screwdriver on a flying aircraft carrier at number three, it's an adventure we'd like to elect Prime Minister of All Master Stories. The epic three-parter Utopia, The Sound of Drums, and Last of the Time Lords. And at number two, yes, you guessed it. The angels have the blue box and we've got it on a t-shirt. That's right. It's time to not blink. And you've been waiting for it. Coming in hot at number one. It's preserved in our hearts for all time. Exactly like a cup of soup. It's the day of the doctor. That's right, everyone. Day of the Doctor is the number one story in the Pull to Open Codex. I don't think there's any dispute over that. It wasn't even close. Uh, blink number two. Again, we're, we're replicating the top ratings of the, the last Doctor Who magazine poll. Uh, but it's it's hard to, to gain say that, Pete, right? I mean, mm. how how can you get better than Day of the Doctor? Yeah, so Day of the Doctor, it's funny, when when we did The Doctor's Wife, which is also on this list, but it's number 20, Mm. I had to sort of think back to Day of the Doctor a bit. Because one of the reasons I didn't rate The Doctor's Wife as highly was, even though I love the episode, it's, as I said at the time, it's not really about anything other than the show itself. Whereas I think The Day of the Doctor... Uh, is very much about things <laughs> you know, that are that is even though it is a celebration of Doctor Who, there is tons and tons of stuff for fans to love and get behind and and just remember forever. I mean, it's also about uh, guilt. It's about decisions. It's about um, looking back on trauma in your life and dealing with it. You know, like there is a lot of thematic stuff in the Day of the Doctor that goes beyond just the show itself. And I, I think it is very much deserving of the number one ranking here because it's it, like I say, and even, even structurally, it's not just about like Dr. Who in that you, you need to hundred percent, like know the entire canon to appreciate it. Not at all. I, yeah. This is also a great episode for classic fans. It really ticks all the boxes. And it, I mean, it's such, such a risk. And, you know, I, I know that, that Moffat had his heart in his mouth for the, the whole production of this, right? Because on paper, like br- bringing in a new doctor, like, oh, uh, Chris Eggleston won't participate. We've got to invent a whole new doctor that's going to totally mess up the time stream. Uh, and, you know, but we're, we're going to try and compensate by getting the best act that we can. And, but, oh, God, you know, only only uh, Jenna Coleman signed up for like, you know, all, almost down to the wire. Like it was it could have been such a disaster. And instead, yeah. it was a masterpiece of storytelling, arguably aided by the fact that the whole of New Who up to that point had been building up to it. Right, right for sure. Yeah, the, the story of the Time War finally revealed, you know, a big reveal uh you know right before that you could then twist around a very time and wind away and come back to rose and it was maybe the the first story for new who fans who jumped on with rose where they felt like they were getting the the big nostalgia vibe right, right? yeah no that's fair everything that classic who fans had sort of been feeling for years about nostalgic about a monster or uh or a particular doctor or a story yeah. like that that story delivered for new who fans yeah, no, it, it it was amazing. Definitely epic. Definitely comfortable with it being up here. 
Um, what about the rest of it? I think yeah. the order, it's really like all the stories make sense. I think that you, we might quibble with the order. Yeah, Megopolis higher than the war games. I'm not sure I would if I was ranking it on my own. I'm not sure I'd do that. That that is a result of, of compromise uh between us. So that's that's interesting. Uh yeah, well the Logopolis yeah. is a lot shorter than the war games. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yeah, if if I had to choose one to what if I was forced to watch one right now, it, it would be it would be a toss up, right? Because you would definitely be thinking about four episodes. You, d- like you don't have that padding in the episodes. middle uh, yeah. as much. That's uh, true. But these are great myth makers. Definitely a surprising one, which I yeah. had never really seen or experienced before doing the podcast, and um, was you know surprised about how much I liked it. Um, all yeah. of this works. I mean, the Romans, the Deadly Assassin, Power of the and Daleks, Pirate Planet. All this makes sense. I might personally planet. rank Waters of Mars a little higher than some of the ones above it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah totally. that, that's me with my my Dalek for for Waters mm-hmm. of Mars when uh, you and our guests both rated it uh, Viking Banger. So that's that's what brought it down, and it uh, it couldn't actually ascend higher because Fugitive of the Jadoon is our first uh, in, in this list, our first double banger, our first hundred percent banger. Uh, our so banger, banger, and also the banger, highest banger. rated Whitaker story so that's far. Right. Anyway, that's right. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how the other stories f- slot in to this. Uh, and it's definitely going to be interesting to hear what you guys out there think of this list. Uh, please go and check out the full results. If you missed our countdown, uh, you can go and check it out right on, on pulltoopen.net on our brand new website. You can see the full listings. You can go in, you can uh, compose uh screeds to us on uh why why we're crazy and what were we even thinking uh please please write in let us know what what you would rank higher what you would rank lower uh and uh and also let us know if you agree with absolutely every single rating in this list because that would also be a surprise and definitely worthy of note if you literally agree with every single rating in this whole 100 uh we might even have you on the show because my my goodness what <laughs> what a, what a like mind you must have well remember for a good chunk of these i think even maybe the majority at this point you can have your say you can go to right. the poll feature on spotify so if you're listening on spotify go to the any episode uh, that we've done in the last little while, and you can go to the poll and have your say and vote for whatever rating uh, that you like. And we will obviously revisit this list. uh, Maybe not soon, but at certainly at several (laughs) points in the future and uh, incorporate some of your feedback. So go ahead, go to the poll, go ahead and create a Spotify burner account and just go ahead and rank every episode. And we'll talk more about those results. That's right. And uh, you know what? If, if we're going to do this next time when we've done 200 stories, that's pro- it's probably going to be another couple of years <laughs> before mm-hmm. we have this countdown again. So uh, I'm really glad we got to do this one. I hope you uh, enjoyed listening to it and had as much fun as we did um, ranking this and counting it down and arguing with us. Please, the fun doesn't need to end here. Please come. Uh, onto the internet and argue with us at any any of our locations pull to open or pull to open 63 on all the socials and uh pete any last thoughts just thoughts that this is a podcast subscribe to it share it review it do all the things i want to thank martin west for his great music as always uh as chris said follow us wherever we are on the internets and go ahead and drop us a line and we'll see you next time for the day of the daleks which is the next story our from, 101st. Day, from day of the doctor to day of the Daleks uh, it's time to get really timey-wimey with it and I for one am not going to be able to blink until next week so thanks for joining us the Hot 100 and keep reaching for the stars take care folks <laughs>